Welcome back to the Charleston County Roadwise program. Remember, we're all about the transportation sales tax. And uh, remember that sales tax passed in uh, 2004, and then another referendum gave us bonding responsibility. And uh, I was asking Peter Balakat, who is the pre-construction manager for the Charleston County Roadwise program, or the Charleston County Transportation Sales Tax program, if he felt that we were going to be affected, would this program be affected since we chose to use bonds early on to pay for these projects so that we could get ahead of inflation, mm -hmm. right? That's right. And so uh, we're ahead of inflation to a large degree, but can you just say yes or no, or wh what do you think is going to happen there with the bonds? Well, Charleston County uh, has been blessed uh, as really as a result of good governance to uh, to maintain, I believe, the highest uh, available bond rating by the credit agencies, and that allows the county to borrow at very low rates. Um, and the uh, the major uh, bond sales uh, have been completed for the sales tax program that have uh, mm. are providing the funds to construct uh, the Bees Ferry project as well as the Johnny Dodds Boulevard and other major uh, projects in the program. Um, so, uh, as as a result of that, it, it allows the county to borrow money at very low rates, like you say, to get ahead of inflation, uh, keeps project uh, overall program costs down, uh, and allows the major improvements to be done early on. There can be no better use of the money than that. It really is working for Charleston County residents. Uh, and so it, it, it uh, is providing the dollars to continue the projects that it has set aside. Now, will that, the bonds that we've already floated or that we've sold, will they uh, cover future projects or do we have to go back to the well? Well, the, uh, the, the major projects uh, that are bond funded were part of the referendums. And so those are, that is you know, essentially the list of, yeah. of projects available to be funded through those proceeds. Okay, just those projects. Mm -hmm. And so for each set of projects, do you try to identify additional bonds bonding opportunities or? Well, at, uh, with the current crop of projects, like I said, the, uh, the uh, comprehensive plan identified the uh, essentially a program cash flow that identified how much uh, bond funds would be needed to complete those projects. Um, and that was all covered in the November 2006 referendum. Mm. Um, if, if, uh, you know, uh, if future projects were to be added, it would, uh, to be proposed to be bond funded, it would require probably another referendum. Another referendum. So we would have to go back to the voters mm -hmm. if that was the case. Let's move away from that for just a bit and talk about the design. And we're going to have some good B-roll so that we can take a look at the before because the project hasn't started yet. Mm -hmm. And you expect that to start sometime this fall? That's right. We're expecting it to start this fall. So we have some photos of, uh, in videotape of before, and um, hopefully not too long from now we'll have some pictures of the after Bees Ferry Road. But uh, what's the problem with that road? It, it, I noticed uh, in one reading that I came across that it was said that uh, the angles on the road, it was difficult for drivers to manage that highway. But what was wrong? Well, there's, there's a... A number of things that the project is going to address. I think the one that you're you're thinking about is the intersection of Bees Ferry Road and Savannah Highway. Mm -hmm. uh, right now, I'm sure a lot of Charleston County drivers are familiar with Bees Ferry Road, where it comes into US 17, uh, comes in at a pretty bad angle, uh, which makes for uh, some sight distance problems. People are having to look over their shoulders in order to see traffic coming from the left, um, and it also has some capacity issues. Uh, so this project, as it's presently designed, will uh, realign Bees Ferry Road at US 17 into a uh, T-type intersection where the roads come together at more regular 90-degree angles. Mm. That'll provide uh, improved safety and sight distance. Also, that intersection will uh, have a traffic signal added to it that'll control the right-of-way for people who are you know, going through there. Uh, there'll be additional turn lanes added, so the capacity issue will be addressed as well. Um, but really, that's just one portion of the project. Uh, like I mentioned uh, in the beginning, it's a total of four and a half miles of widening. 
um, all the way from SC61 to US17. And the existing road is primarily a two-lane road. Uh, there, as development has occurred, turn lanes and things have been added intermittently. Uh, this project will, will provide a major improvement uh, to address the current traffic volumes and also uh, planning ahead towards future growth in the area that uh, will uh, gradually increase those volumes of traffic uh, to the design year, which uh, presently is 2030 for our project. Oh, uh, did I read somewhere that at some point along Bees Ferry, the widening would go to six feet? Uh, well, the, right now, um, right at the intersection of Glen McConnell Parkway and Bees Ferry Road, uh, it's about, uh, well, there's uh, uh, multiple turn lanes and things in there. Um, so within, within that limit, uh, the project will go to six lanes um, and because right at Bees Ferry and Glen McConnell as well as the intersections with the West Ashley Circle, the volumes really are going to be heaviest mm -hmm. there and according to the traffic projections, that's what's needed in order to accommodate the, the volumes. And traffic projections were made. That's right. Has that tra traffic doubled or tripled or... Well, Did it remain the same over the years? Right now, um, portions of Bees Ferry Road, uh, particularly between Glen McConnell and going south towards Savannah Highway, carry about uh, not quite 20,000 cars per day on average. Uh, the traffic projections, which were obtained by using the Berkeley, Charleston, Dorchester uh, Council of Governments, they have a CHATS policy committee that maintains a regional transportation model and that model is projecting volumes on Bees Ferry Road to go uh, to increase to approximately 30,000 ADT by 2030 or 30,000 cars per day. Um, Boy, that would be something else. Something had to be done. Yeah. That was yeah. apparent. And these improvements, uh, uh, well, I should say, without the improvements, the level of service on Bees Ferry Road would degrade to what a traffic engineer would describe as a level of service F similar to a report card, A is good, F is bad. I know what F is. It's bad. <laughs> it's bad news. And uh, so these improvements will, will allow uh, Bees Ferry Road level of service to remain at an acceptable level uh, through the design year of 2030. Oh, well, that, that's going to help quite a bit. Mm -hmm. uh, when we come back from the break, I'd like to ask you a few questions about um, the fact that some folks just don't want to be bothered with all of this. And uh, I would like us to tell them how we work on these projects, how we uh, make sure that we're considerate of the public when we're doing construction projects. And if you'll talk with us about that, sure. we'd be glad. And we'll return in a moment with that kind of information. It's not going to be all that bad.